have some others possibly possibly joining us as we go along here too. So let's just, uh, I'll open in prayer. Father, we come boldly to the throne of grace tonight, Father. I and all my friends as we gather together tonight, Lord, and most of all, we pray, Father, for your direction, your wisdom as we discuss the things we'll talk about tonight. Father, help us uh, understand the things that are important to you that are on your heart regarding our fellowship, regarding our membership, regarding our friends of the fellowship, Father, and we thank you for that. Lord, let everything that we do and say, Lord, in our fellowship, in our meeting tonight, in the School of Division tonight, be, uh, bring glory to Jesus, that he would be the most heard, the most seen, uh, <laughs> literally making him well-known and famous, and we thank you for that tonight. Thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit it was here tonight. Uh, to lead and guide and direct and orchestrate. We thank you for that. Thank you for our fellowship. Thank you for FGB, MFI, and all the countries that make up this organization. Father, for all of our national leaders, for the presidents, and all those that are gathering in Malaysia tonight, uh, morning there, and uh, for all of those that are participating via Zoom virtually, Father, we pray for them. We thank you that uh, they've, they, they've sought uh, your heart and your will and your plan in this vote that will take place. We thank you for that. Thank you for our next international president, Lord. Thank you for that man of God that you would assign to oversee and caretake and shepherd this fellowship. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, I... Obviously, I just prayed for the international directors. One of the things that I wanted us to do <laughs> is to pray for this meeting that's in place. And I was thinking about Ash international presidents. Obviously, Dima Shikarian was the first. He, he started this organization. Uh, it was birthed out of a vision God had given him. And then, of course, his son, Richard, was next in line. And that's uh, and then uh, Mario Garcia. He was elected in 2018 at the World Convention in Las Vegas, Nevada. And uh, uh, many of you I know have had an opportunity to be with him, to be around him, or you know to hear him speak. I know, uh, obviously, I, I, I suspect for all of us, the last time we might have seen him in person was at the World Convention in Anaheim. And I remember I was, uh, I was there. Uh, uh, actually, I was, I had gone, I had flown out there a day or two early to get ready. And um, I was standing in the hallway down there outside the meeting room where we had a number of tables set up. And I was, and, and I saw him coming down the hallway. Of course, he looked a little different from the last time I had seen him in person. He had lost a lot of weight. And uh, at first I didn't recognize him when he was maybe 75, you know, 50 feet away from me. And uh, he was walking with another gentleman and uh, he probably got about 25 feet or so from me. And he, he had been looking down and he looks up and he says, oh, hi, Ron. He came over and gave me the biggest hug. You know, God blessed us with an amazing an amazing leader for our fellowship. And I'm believing that we will see the same thing happen. And, you know, in addition to praying for the international president, um, there's so much that happens after the president is elected. It's like all of these positions that various individuals have, like a cat in the cabinet. We're talking earlier about Doug Woolley, international secretary, one of our USA members. But basically, when the new international president steps into their position and role, they they either, you know, confirm those that are in positions already. They basically start off with a, a clean, a clean slate, except for your, you know, what happens on your individual country, such as the United States. And I, I was thinking about that. I mean, you know. The, the cabinet members that we currently have internationally, Doug Woolley being one of them, and Francis Owusu from Ghana, <clears throat> and uh, uh, 
Brother Bertone from France and other, and I forget the, the brother from Indonesia. But yeah, all of those positions, they we, we, we may see a complete, you know, a different group of people. And uh, I think we ought to be praying for this new international president. <laughs> I mean, if, if you or I were probably stepping into that awesome role and we got to thinking about, oh my, you know, you know, it's one thing to select one or two, but when you have multiple people from, you know, that are in these positions, uh, too many to even mention. So I would encourage us. In fact, maybe we, before we get into the school division, we'll we'll take a moment to just kind of pray ahead to that the decisions that are that need to be made by this individual. So if any of you want to pray. Doesn't have to be long, short, however you feel led uh, in that decision process, Dave, Dave McBurney. Father, we come to you in one accord, and we thank you for who you are, and we know that you're a part of everything that we do. Mm -hmm. You are love, and your banner over us is love. Father, for the meeting that's taking place in Kuala Lampur tonight, we pray that your man would be named your person, a man after your own heart, oh God. Mm -hmm. A man that is full of love, uh, much like Mario. We pray, oh Lord, that your man would come surface. And we pray that all would be in accord, that everybody that sat that meeting would know that it's your man and would be in accord and support that person. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you. Father, yeah, if this, yeah. this new president steps into his position that you've called him to, we ask, Lord, that uh, you would give him wisdom, wisdom mm -hmm. beyond his years and a peace that passes all understanding, knowing that, that uh, he knows that you are right beside him by the power of the Holy Spirit and mm -hmm. that you are guiding him, that... Uh, as your word says, the steps of the righteous are ordered by you. And Lord, we, we pray that uh, each step, each decision that he makes would be ordered by you. We pray your will be done in, as he directs and, and as you guide uh, his direction for the leadership of full gospel. And, and we, we thank you for him. We thank you that, uh, that you are going to bless him mightily, that uh, you're going to speak in and through him mightily. And we, uh, we praise you. And we just pray again for that peace of him knowing that uh, you're in control and that uh, you're guiding the direction of, of the international of full gospel. And, and uh, we thank you. Thank you for your, that you're guiding the leadership as well and the decisions that he makes and the people he chooses to lead. Uh, we just uh, praise you and Thank you for uh, what you're going to do in and through him. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> amen. Anybody else like to pray? Yes. Father, we thank you for the new leader that you have chose to lead this great organization. This role that he's entering in, let him have the unction of the Holy Spirit, the Holy mm. Ghost, Lord. Mm. And as, as he leads even tonight and realizes the awesome role that you placed him in, that uh, the future is bright uh, and that he will live and move and have his being in you. Mm. And as as we all lift you up, Lord Jesus, worldwide, we know you, that you draw men and women, families, leaders, all leaders, to yourself. Yes. And that's what we pray, and that's what we ask. We thank you for the, uh, the two great prayers that were already prayed, and uh, we look unto you with uh, great confidence. Yes. And yes. knowing that your will be done, your kingdom come in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Anybody else?
brother, right now we are sheep. Mm. And we look, show us the person, Father, that's been chosen. Both in our minds and the spirit, let your perfect will be done. As both men and women are brought together as one in unity. Another Psalm, oh, I already said 92 1. So, Lord, we thank you for the blessing that we can be each to each other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, praise, praise God. Um, you know, I was talking to someone <coughs> a couple weeks ago, and uh, we were talking about Mario Garcia. And, uh, you know, he, uh, I, I, when I, when I think about Mario and I know, I know that the new international president, the next one, it's only the fourth one in the history of this fellowship, 75 years young, and it'll be the fourth international president, uh, Mario Garcia, like I'm sure, uh, Demas was and Richard was, was such a statesman. He was such a wonderful representative um, of, uh, of our fellowship. Um, he carried himself well. He spoke well. He, he, he you know, the thing that uh, impacted me uh, or, or that I took note of was his love for others. It didn't matter, you know, what role you had, you know, where you were <clears throat> in, the, in the chain of things, you know, uh, you were a big deal to him and, and to God, of course. So, I know it'll be the same thing with this new international director. Um, yeah, just a couple things next week, uh, if you would please. Uh, reading assignment would be, it's actually the last thing to read, would be Tommy Hicks' uh, dream is end time vision. That would be the last, uh, kind of the last book, and we'll we'll go from there. So this is week number eight. Next week will be number nine. We'll do 12 of these. And uh, we're going to get probably get into a little more teaching of some of the things that Demas talked about that we read about in the greatest business in the world. Um, Bob, you, uh, Bob, were you, Bob Nations, were you at the Lake of the Ozarks when, in 1982? <clears throat> uh, yes, I was, and I had that. I had the opportunity to drive six or eight of the the men at first. Uh, was with Demas uh, starting of the fellowship. Wow. And it, it was just wonderful <clears throat> as they uh, shared back and forth. And it was yeah. uh, uh, Enoch Christopherson that shortly after that, I, I got to go on our airlift with him to Brazil. Mm. Yes, yeah, it's just wonderful. And T.L. Osborne was there. And, and you, you know, uh, that uh, his words were just so uh, wonderful. And it's like uh, when Demas spoke and he, TL got up, uh, he recapped everything that Demas said. Uh, it, it, was, uh, it was so good. And of course, we know that when Demas gave the charge it, uh, that the Lord had showed him that he's given us everything, and we're, we're not waiting on him. The Lord's waiting on us. <laughs> yeah, and this, and this uh, you know, what, what our reading assignment for, uh, for this class, The Greatest Business in the World, is, ba is basically what Demas had to say in 1982. I think you gathered that from reading this as well. But, uh, um, yeah, it's what he shared in 1982 at the Lake of the Ozarks. And uh, a couple of things he talked about. He said God had used FBBMF ICE to spark the charismatic renewal. And uh, I know, I know, in our one of our, our Tuesday night leadership meeting, I know we've talked about this in the past. Uh, some of you may know more about it than I do. But the charismatic renewal was started at Notre Dame in South Bend, Indiana, hmm. a number of years ago. It was an outpouring of the Spirit of God upon. Catholics. And interestingly enough, our current voice magazine has a Catholic priest on the cover, whom we had we had the opportunity to hear speak at the World Convention. And he is also going to be one of our speakers at the USA National Convention in, uh, in Houston, 
May 18, 19, and 20. Our registration's open, so you could register for that. I'd encourage you to come and be there in person. Uh, but yeah, to think about the impact, you know, um, Demas has talked about this, and God has shown Demas, has shown Demas Shikarian that FGBMFI is a tool of God to awaken the layman, the lay person uh, in the body, uh, uh, awaken the layman in the body of Christ, not so much the unbeliever, but to the believer. And that happened in, in uh, Notre Dame, uh, at Notre Dame University. The Spirit of God moved mightily. In fact, one of our, uh, Jerry Schmidt, who's in our class tonight, is, is a good friend of mine and uh, part of our Sarasota chapter here in Florida. And one of our members who graduated to heaven, I think maybe a year and a half ago now, uh, Arnie Johnson, was there in at Notre Dame University when all of that took place? That had to have been exciting. It's kind. Of, it kind of reminds me of when I think about Acts chapter two, when the Spirit of God was poured out, the Holy Spirit was poured out, and that the the transformation that occurred on that day was happening back at at the uh, University of Notre Dame, and uh, I think that's exciting. You know, I think it's exciting to be part of what God is doing in these last days. Um, we know we're in the last days because Jesus told us 2,000 plus years ago we were in the last days. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes I go like, well, that last 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 days has taken a long time. But you know, when it comes to time, God's got it right. Our time, our concept of time is entirely different from God. You know, when God talks about millennia after millennia after millennia, you know, that's very difficult for us to understand and kind of wrap our thinking around that. Uh, just like the School of the Vision. God had this School of the Vision planned way before anybody even thought about the School of the Vision. And this School of the Vision goes along with what uh, Dima Shakarian talked about, you know, what he had noticed. Uh, we kind of, as a fellowship, kind of lost our way uh, in in uh, the greatest people or the greatest business in the world. He talked about for 30 years, the fellowship, and it actually grown quite large, but it's just in its embryonic, it was the embryo stage. He, he talked about that. And, uh, you know, there was more to come. The best was yet to come. You know, the things that have transpired in our fellowship and we might say just in the body of Christ in general, the attacks to the enemy. Um, our, our most recent international president, Mario Garcia, I believe it was the devil that killed him. It wasn't God that took him to heaven because he needed, he, you know, he needed Mario there for some work to do. He died. He got <laughs> sick. He died. And uh, I know John Koretz talked about this before. I mean, it was last year. I get, yeah, it was. I believe it was last year. Yeah, in the, maybe anyhow, when John was teaching the school division last year, John came down with COVID. He nearly died. He was in the hospital for three months yeah. with COVID, hmm. and it was the enemy that didn't like what was going on. Now, I don't suggest anybody in this meeting or anybody watching the video later walk around in fear about the devil what the devil might do or could do and all that. If I died right now, I know where exactly where I'll be real quick. And it might be a little better than where I'm at. I, I'm not saying I'm not happy looking here with you, with you gentlemen. Uh, it's an honor. But uh, yeah, we have to, you know, we want to really push on. And this, when you read the greatest business in the world, what is the greatest business in the world? Bill Wilson, you're, you're, you're involved in ministry. Bill Wilson, to you, when you think about, and I know what Demas is, what is the greatest business in the world? What is the greatest thing we could possibly be doing? I believe it'd be serving serving the Lord in whatever capacity that he has, has us in, uh, whether it be in our workplace ministry or our call to church ministry or missions or uh, whatever. Uh, I think that that would kind of be the greatest business. Yeah. Anyone, any, anyone else want to add 
add to that or another great, thought, another the, angle? The great, the, har the great harvest. Okay. Yeah, yeah great yeah. harvest. Robert, Lord, you had something? Yeah, the job that Jesus gave us, the Great Commission. Yeah. Right. Amen. You know, and we can do that wherever we're at. Amen. That's true. Larry, you, Larry you, you know, you uh, want to say? Would, yeah, you know, I say, right uh, what I would say is the Great Commission, because we, we don't understand really how long eternity is. We don't understand what hell's going to be like. Hmm. And uh, we need to tell people about Jesus so they don't spend eternity in hell. Hmm. I don't want them to stand there when God's given the judgment on them. And they're going to say, Larry, why didn't you tell me this? So, uh, so we need to speak up. And we know that we can't bring people to Jesus. But he does. He uses us to use the words. But his Holy Spirit will convict these people. And so we hmm. need to take advantage every time we can. Amen. Yes. Amen. Any, any, any other thoughts? You know, in the secular business, uh, uh, mm -hmm. if we knew the CEO personally, uh, we can make quite an impact because he can train us and teach us uh, the ropes of the business. And so more, uh, so much more, we can know our father through Jesus personally. We get to know him, uh, Christ in you. The hope of glory. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You know, um, it was at the Lake of the Ozarks where, um, where God revealed an end time strategy as he, as Demas, uh, spoke about, and we find written in the greatest business in the world, greatest business in the world, all in my two cents, doing whatever God, doing whatever God tells you to do. You know, what an honor and a privilege. Because whatever we do, uh, we do for the king or his representative. When we understand an ambassador amb an, an, amb an ambassador's role and the responsibility that the ambassador has to represent the king, an ambassador from the United States going into another country represents that country. Uh, rep and and uh, we have that opportunity to do that. But I thought it was interesting in reading this greatest business in the world, an end time strategy. And I think, and John Koretz talked about this, I know I've heard him talk about it in the school division, but for about 30 years, the fellowship lost its way. It had gone, it had moved away from kind of an Acts chapter two, miracles, you know, uh, Acts, book of Acts, or even in the ministry of Jesus, miracle signs and wonders. And the focus primarily was on evangelism. And uh, not that we are not to be evangelists. We were talking about the Great Commission. And the Great, Great Commission actually, in, uh, of course, involves more than uh, preaching, the, uh, telling people about Jesus and seeing people come into the kingdom. Obviously, we want to win them. We're to make we want disciples. What's that? We're to make disciples. Yeah, well, yeah, and that's that's the key. That's kind of well, where they I'm can going. do. Thank they you. can do the same thing, and it just multiplies. I know. Yeah, and that's where, and that's where, <laughs> even by David Shakarian's admission, you know, the the fellowship had kind of moved away from that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, there were there were some in positions of authority in the fellowship. I, John Caret shared this. I mean, back in California, at the headquarters. The board of directors removed Demas as the international president. They voted him off the island. <laughs> now he stuck around and he was back, you know, I think within, you know, a fair amount of time and all of that too. It just might misguided situations and things like that, but not so much focusing in on that sort of thing too. But he, but in 1982, I thought it's interesting statistically. Uh, we had about 50,000 paid FGB MFI members. Now, our membership here in the United States with those we uh, believe are members, when I say believe are members, uh, those are lifetime members. Those would be lifetime members that we've kind of lost track of over time for one reason or another. But we have, uh, we, we have about, I think about, 5,000 members here in the United States. Um, 
We have about 100 chapters right now in the United States, though I did receive, I have two new chapter applications. Uh, we have a couple, we're adding a couple too. So that's kind of where we're at right now here in the United States. I can't speak about the other countries and all of that. I know at one point, I believe there were about 140 and 140 uh, countries that were part of FGBMFI. Now I believe, we, and we have gone up an increase. Uh, some of those that had left the fellowship for one reason or another, like those that, that left the fellowship here in the United States and went and started other organizations. Well, Businessmen's Fellowship in America is one of them. And uh, which by the way, we have a good relationship with, you know, which I, uh, you know, our national president, Mike Postlewaite, that's one of the things that God really placed on his heart, this idea of reconciliation. I don't know, if, I think I think we mentioned it in our, maybe it was last last Thursday's meeting, you know, we, we, we in our early formation, we sent the In America group a thousand dollar check. We sent the check back, they didn't want it because it came from us. Now that attitude has all changed and all of that, but, uh, and reconciliation is good. You know, I'm glad to see people being reconciled and things like that. But our focus is making disciples, as Larry Booth was talking about. And that's what that's what God pointed out to Demas. The school of the purpose of the school of the vision is to train our members to not only teach the school of the vision, but to be doers of the work doing exactly what Jesus did, miracle signs and wonders. And one thing I want to mention too, and I was thinking about this today, is we, we put a strong emphasis on in the school of the vision for us, us as attendees to pray in the spirit in the morning and then ask God for the interpretation and then do what God tells you to do. Respond to what he tells you, whatever instruction it might be, you respond to that. And for a lot of Christians, that is, and new kind of stuff. They've never done anything. They've never, they've never, uh, you might say they've never operated in the spiritual realm. I don't know how else to explain it, you know, um, for one reason or another. So this exercise, you know, this, this encouragement that I have and John has had about praying in the spirit for many, that's kind of like their first step, you know, start moving in the, what we might call the miraculous, uh, new to, to, to many. Probably, I'm, I'm sure for you, you gentlemen in the meeting tonight, that's not new. God's used you in mighty ways and all of that too. But I believe the School of Vision, we want to stir, stir one another up, get about the, the work of, of Jesus. Um, you know, we've got... You know, people are good at note taking in church or note taking and seeing a message in a sermon and watching and all that. And I, I call them there. And I'm not suggesting we don't attend church. We have professional church going. That's all they do is they go to church. They don't do anything other than go to church. They might hear a good word. They might be get excited, you know, for you know, an hour and a half, two hours, however long the service is, they leave the building, they don't do anything what they just heard. Mm -hmm. Didn't James point that out about being a hearer, Hear, hearing only and not doing anything with what you just heard? Mm -hmm. And we don't want to be that way. Mm -hmm. uh, time is short. Time is short not only for, uh, let's say, humanity. Time is short for each of us. Uh, I was talking to somebody the other day. I said, well, I've got more years behind me than I have ahead of me. Even if I live to be 120, I got more behind me than I have ahead of me. Okay. <laughs> And God's timing is all different than our timing. I tell people I got a minute and a half left on my clock. You know, they look at me kind of funny. <laughs> then I explain to them, you know, God's concept of time, you know, his day is a thousand, our thousand years. So it's entirely different. But yeah, back in the day, 1982 had a lot of people. That about a three, three quarters of a million people were attending FGBMFI meetings. And in the future, and we still talk about this, and we still believe this. FGBMFI internationally, God, God had given Demas Shakarian a vision of one million members in the world, around the world, a million members. Now, there's about, I don't know, six to seven billion people live on planet Earth. 
And there are a lot of people that, that have not heard the gospel. Timothy Stumeyer is who's in our meeting tonight. Timothy's getting ready to go travel back to Nepal. Timothy's a missionary, travels to Nepal to minister the gospel. And the gospel is more than you need to be saved. Uh, that's the number one thing, you know, keep them from going to hell. But the gospel, the good news, involves a whole num number of other things uh, that are truly part of the good news. Part of the good news is you don't have to be sick anymore to a person who is sick. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, Jesus ministered to the people. We read about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the people that were blind, the people that were lame. I mean, even dead people coming back to life. And some people would say, well, Jesus was, you know, that's God, God doing that. That's not for us. You know, I, my understanding, I, I haven't experienced it, but some have said, well, you know, when the last apostle died, all that stuff ended. Mm -hmm. Not true. That's not true. And uh, God will, God will, God won't do those things that he's left up to us to do. It all started in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. I'll talk more about this when we talk about the authority of the believer. But he told them, Ron's paraphrase, you guys are in charge of planet Earth. I'll put you in charge. <clears throat> and they, of course, they blew their assignment. We know that. And Jesus came back to straighten all that mess out. And so what did Jesus do? Minister for three and a half years. And he put, he put, he put his disciples in charge. A disciple, a Christ follower, you guys are in charge. And he's asking us to do the same kind of thing in our lives as well, too. But yeah, Dima Shaw saw a million paid members around the world. I don't know what our paid membership is. We do a we do an annual um, census every year. And our, our bylaws require that we do an annual census. We do one in August of every year by the end of August. But he saw 15 million people coming to FGBMFI meetings. 15 million people in over a time period of the year be attending FGBMFI meetings. I'm sure for, for those of you that have, have you know, gone to FGBMFI meetings, you know, some time ago, I, I first attended meetings in the late uh, 1970s. And the meetings we went, I went to and I attended were big. Now, Demas was not for big meetings, by the way. Yeah, World Convention is a different story. We had 10,000 people show up. But his desire was for chapters to be small in numbers. And uh, that's a whole other subject, too. But th yeah, but I, I remember going to FGBMFI meetings and hearing wonderful speakers. And uh, from all, all walks of life, you know, from Presbyterian ministers, Catholic priests, and um, professional business people and ministers. Bob was talking about T.L. Osborne. If, you, if you've ever watched any of T.L. Osborne, I mean, I, you know, obviously was I'm old enough to have enjoyed him, not personally, but seen him on TV back in the day. Of course, you can watch T.L. Osborne on YouTube now, and it's fun to pull that up and watch Brother T.L. or Brother Oral Roberts. Uh, T.L. Osborne, Oral Roberts, and so many others had such a, a uh, impact on our founder, Dima Shikarian, and this fellowship. Uh, Brother Kenneth Hulk Copeland, who was one of our speakers at the World Convention this past, yeah, there you go. No, I just happened to have that here. Uh, uh, the Big Love Plan. The Big Love Plan, T.L. Osborne. Yeah, yeah, you can still get T.L.'s books on uh, online. You purchase yeah. those, but just a wonderful man of God. Here's some of the crowds. Yeah, we lost your picture there. Okay. But it kind of gets lost in the... Okay, yeah, we saw that. Well, we don't see that one. Anyhow, big meetings. Yeah, we had hundreds and hundreds of people in the meetings I went to. But anyhow, <laughs> um, so let's believe God for that. Let's believe God for an expansion here in the United States and around the world. Believe that. Um, yeah, one thing, Demas, on page 10, 
in in the book or in the greatest business in the world, call it a book. Uh, he said at the top of the page, it says, I'm waiting on you. You know, a lot of people in the body of Christ are waiting for God to do something. In fact, a lot of us in the body of Christ keep asking God to do something, whatever that something is. Demas, uh, here's what he said. He said, Demas asked the Lord, when are you going to bring the revival? You know, and we might think about that as well, too, because I hear I hear talk about revival. Great revival is coming. And I believe that to be true. Great revival coming. A great outpouring of the spirit of God. People coming into the kingdom. And he says, and, and Demas in his, in his prayer, talking with God, when are you going to move? When are you going to breathe, laugh, bring the great revival that's going to take the whole world? Come on, God. When are you going to do this? Then he said, he said, it's in the book. Then it got real quiet. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Have you ever had that, you know, where you're kind of talking to God and you kind of stop talking and you're waiting for something and it gets real quiet. <laughs> Just picture Demas. You know, it says it got real quiet. And he said, you know, we've been 30 years in the embryo and we're just now being born to do what God wants us to do. This is 1982. How many years is that? 1982? 40? What is that? What's the math? 41? Where's 2020? 40, 41. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, man. <laughs> yeah. 30 years in the embryo. And we're just beginning being born to do what God wants us to do. He said, then a revelation burst in my chest that was just as clear saying, son, I'm waiting for you. He went on to say, God went on to say to Demas, and I can hear it tonight. I'm giving, I've given you my son. Mm. I've given you my name. I've given you his authority. These are all things I think we'll spend some time looking at some scriptures and teaching these, you know, going over these things. Uh, the next few classes, the four remaining classes, <laughs> he says, I can't give you any more. And it reminded me of Moses. What did, what do you have in your hand? God talking to Moses. Well, he had a stick, he had a rod. And uh, when he dropped that rod, that stick on the ground, it turned into a snake. When he picked it back up, it turned back into a rod again. And the, 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 the thing that I thought was interesting that Demas noted, that Demas said at this meeting, he said it only worked when he used it. It only worked when he picked it up. It only, it only worked when he did something with it. He did something with it. It says, God is waiting on us to take what he's already given us and go. Um, it had to have been just a, an amazing experience and, and, and sight to see when Jesus called the first disciples fishermen. And they were, you know, he said, come follow me and I'll make you fishers, man. They immediately dropped everything they were doing. They literally dropped their lifestyle, their their business, their employment to follow Jesus. And that's what God is asking us to do. I think at times we get other things get in the way of following Jesus. Um, I think I believe, you know, if I understand scripture correctly, there's no such thing as burnout for a uh, for a believer should never happen. Burnout happens when you've got too many things going on and you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing. Getting outside of God's will. I'm talking about, I mean, that would be considered a sin, yeah. But I'm not talking about some other kinds of sins. But he's waiting on us to do that. We've talked about this before in Luke chapter 4. I'm going to turn there. Luke chapter 4. Um after he had been, Jesus had been baptized in the Holy Spirit. This is so important to understand the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the power of God. God, as a believer, God resides inside every believer. He comes to live inside every believer when that believer is born again. 
There's also a comp where God comes upon individuals. We see that in the Old Testament. Now, in the Old Testament, it was the very select few that could experience that, that uh, God upon an individual, the anointing, we might say, coming upon someone. Now, today, for us in the New Testament time, the believer, that, uh, that anointing, that same power is available, not just for a select few, not just for the, the paid clergy, the ordained individual, you know, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. I believe in, in FGBMFI. We have apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers fulfilling that ministry role, we might say, within FGBMFI. They might not have that title, you know? So Jesus got baptized in water, then he got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And uh, Luke chapter 4 Verse 14 says, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. Now, this is what God is desiring for us as, as members of FGBMFI to be empowered by the Spirit of God. And he went into, and he talks about it, went in and he taught in the synagogues, and then he went into Nazareth, where his hometown, and he stood up to read, and the scroll, the book, scroll, uh, of Isaiah was brought to him, and he found the place where it was written, and it's found in Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 and 2, but it says in verse 18 in Luke 4, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Uh, man, we, we need to see ourselves as the Spirit of the Lord upon us, because when the Spirit of the Lord is upon us, <coughs> it'll do exactly what Jesus experienced or said he was about to do. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Poor. The, the NIV uses the term afflicted, the word afflicted. Not just, yeah, he's talking to people who are broke and have no money, of course. But he's also talking about the, the general term, those that are afflicted. Could be sick, depressed, have no money, you know. I mean, financially broke. Uh, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He, th this is a wonderful job description, man. A, a job description for us. <laughs> Amen. It, yeah. Uh, yeah, to to preach the gospel to the poor, the good news. I and I'm sure you, you as well have had opportunities to go preach the gospel someplace. I know, you know, Timothy going into Nepal. Uh, Gary Schmidt here in the meeting is you know, working uh, as a great work in Haiti and is, has preached the gospel in other countries as well, and, and many of you as well, too. Uh, and for me, such a great joy to tell people, to encourage them. They don't have to be sick anymore. God wants to literally heal their sick bodies, no matter how sick they are. I think I told you about the woman at one of our meetings we had and I had in India there. And I mean, they, 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 they just about carried her into the meeting. She was so sick, terminally ill, not expected to live. We prayed for her. God healed her. I came back the next year and here she was totally healed, you know, praying for praying for individuals that were nearly blind because of cataracts in India. And God restored their sight right on the spot. And that's the kind of thing God wants to be using us for. We don't have to go to India or another country to experience that. We can do that wherever God sends us right here in the United States or wherever country we go to. See that come to pass. He went on to say here in, in his reading from Isaiah, preach deliverance to the captives. I got to thinking about that the other day. Deliverance to captive people that are captive. And who, who is the captor or the one that holds people captive? It's Satan, right? It's the devil. Yes. Preaching, he said to preach deliverance to the captives. Glory to God. Recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed or downtrodden. 
to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Gentlemen, this is what we are called to do. This is what God has positioned us to be doing. Uh, he's not giving it to Isaiah or Peter or John to come back and do it. He's left the assignment with us. It's our responsibility. We have an opportunity to do these things. Um, in Matthew chapter 24, uh, verse 3, now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when will these things be? Um, he, and he had talked previously about uh, a stone, not, you know, uh, destruction to the temple and some other things that would be happening, forecasting events that would happen, things that would happen before his second coming. And he, so he sat on, he went to the Mount of Olives with his disciples and he talked to them and he talked privately with them. And they asked the question, tell us when, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And uh, I, I heard somebody the other day and they predicted, they gave a date, you know, it was, I mean, the month, a day and a year that Jesus is coming back. Oh boy. Yeah, oh boy, he's right. <laughs> he hasn't read. I guess he hasn't read in the Bible. But the only, the only one that knows is who. God, God. The, Father, the, Father. the Father knows. Yes. Nobody else knows. <laughs> Anyhow, I thought it was good. Ooh. But he's coming back, and there will be an end, end of this age that we are living in now. In verses four through thirteen, he talks. He talks about all the stuff that's going to happen. You know. Rumors of wars and earthquakes and famines and all of this stuff. And we've seen all of that. They just had a terrible, terrible earthquake in Turkey and Syria impacted both of those countries. I saw in the news tonight some more of the rescue efforts that are going on and U.S. team, the teams that have gone over there to help in the process. And it's over 20,000 people have lost their lives at this because of this earthquake. But verse 14 says this. Listen to this. So when is Jesus coming back? The Bible tells us when. Okay, I have proof. I, I, I typed it on my piece of paper. It says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all, all the world as a witness to the nations. And then the end will come. Now, I was also looking online today. Anybody, are you, any of you familiar with a 1040 window, the 1040 window? Okay, Bill is. Maybe I see not. 1040 window. I forget exactly. Latitude, longitude. I get those mixed up. Gary's heard about it. Yeah, others have heard about 1040 window, you know, which is kind of North Africa, you know, includes, uh, you know, India, a uh, good portion of China. You know, over into uh, yeah, anyhow, 1040 window. Uh, a good way to look at that, if you go online, go to the Joshua Project. Joshua Project. They have all kinds of statistics, and they explain that 1040 window. Within that 1040 window, because we think, gosh, you know, there must be a lot of people really heard the gospel. You know, the gospel has been preached to a lot of people. Well, yeah, they, it has, but there is a large swath of the country. And I know the 1040 window does not include the United States, but based statistically from some of the statistics I've read lately, as far as people that have even professed to be Christians or et cetera, et cetera, those numbers keep going down. So we don't have to go to a 1040 window country to find those that need to hear the gospel. We have Christians who need to understand what the what the gospel, and for us as full gospel businessmen, they need to hear what that full gospel is, what it, what that includes. John chapter fourteen, Jesus telling his disciples, "You will do the same things I've been doing." They've been with him now for about three years. They've seen everything that could possibly happen happen, truly really miraculous things, and Jesus. You know, breaks the good news, bad news, depends on which way you're thinking about it. Disciples heard it first. He starts telling them, I'm leaving. And I can imagine they were heartbroken. You're going to what? You're leaving? You're going to leave us? That wasn't their idea. 
they expected his kingdom to be set up there and he's going to stick around for a while. But he said, no, you're, you, he says, those things that I, you see me do, you're going to do as well. And not only that, Jesus went on to say, John chapter 14, even greater things than these will you do. You know, I think he probably put a good emphasis on the doing part. That's where FGBMFI, the school division, and for all of us in the, in the, in the school here tonight, just to get stirred up to, uh, to be about the father's uh, father's business, um, yeah. There was so much, so much in the, the greatest book in the world. You know, at the very beginning in the introduction, um, it says, it, referring to this 1982 30th anniversary of the fellowship meeting at the Lake of the Ozarks, it says this: During that meeting, Demas laid out the prophetic direction from God. For the future of the fellowship and for every member. God had used FGBMFI to spark the charismatic renewal that brought the power to witness of Jesus to over 100 million Christians in a little more than a decade. That's incredible when you think about that num those numbers. We're talking about 100 million people. Now, the country of India, where I've been blessed to travel a number of times, has about you know, 1.3 billion people. And the uh, country of China has about 1.4 billion people. The number of truly true Christians in a country like India, very, very low percentage wise. Not that I'm going to would believe any government, you know, government statistic. But my understanding, it's probably about 5%, 6% in that country. And uh, again, our you know, I don't want our focus to be on some other nation, but right here in our, in our communities, in our cities, wherever we happen to live, wherever we're at, we're on assignment for God, right? We have an assignment from God. We go into all the world. We talked about the Great Commission. Mark chapter 16 talks about, you know, going into all the world and making disciples. And this is what, what FGBMFI had lost the uh, kind of lost the focus on is the discipling part it was the evangelizing part which is important obviously you want to see him come to jesus but it's also the discipling part and it was just what a couple years ago when mario garcia and john Corette talked and mario shared um his heart with john Corette about this school that you're in tonight a school of the vision and it's and it, and it and it mirrors what Demas was talking about about the doing. He's waiting on us. God's waiting on the fellowship. He's waiting us on us as individual members to be about the Father's business. And it's exciting. Amen. It's exciting to be about the Father's business. So um, I think we'll wrap up here tonight. Any any thoughts, comments, anything you want to add tonight? Before we say good night, anything? Demos in his in his writings basically says that the Great Commission or growth can't be accomplished without the power of the, of the Holy Spirit, without the charismatic movement, without you know signs and wonders. So. When I think of the Great Commission, I think of all of that as part of it. Well, yeah, exactly. Matthew 28, Great Commission, we refer to it in Mark 16. <laughs> Mark 16 goes on to say and adds, talks about laying hands on the sick, talks about casting out devils. Then I think it's the last verse in Mark 16. It, it says that Jesus went with them. Now, Jesus left, but the God that was with me within him, within them, went on working with them and through them, is what that scripture means. That's what God wants to do. Just be available. Just be faithful. Just say yes to God. Too often, we try to figure everything out before we say yes to God. I've tried to do that. doesn't work out very well. But when we are willing and God calls, God speaks, like we talked about, praying in the spirit in the morning, 
whatever the Lord tells you to do, go do. Uh, for some, it's as I said earlier, it's it, it can be a new thing. They've never done that before. I mean, God can talk to me. Yeah, yeah. And we can pray in the spirit. It's nice to pray. It's wonderful to pray in the spirit. Romans chapter 8, Romans 8, what, 28, talks about, well, we don't really know how to pray, you know, in the natural, you know, with our natural language words, et cetera, et cetera. But the spirit of God can pray through us the perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So we're going to be about the Father's business. So next week, let's share some of the testimonies. Let's hear you know, about what God's doing. You know, hey, God spoke to me this week, and here's what he told me to do, and here, here's what happened. It's a miracle or something that happened, something unexpected. Timothy, you had something you want to say? Yes. You know, 10 years ago, I went to Nepal, and I didn't realize the magnitude of purity or even around the world because for the past 15 or so years, the UN has been bringing people from all over Nepal throughout more than seven different countries. Well, after going through 10 years, even just in our own street, we have a couple we didn't even know that was there for four years. They were, they were Muslim Nepali. Today we know who they are, and we talk to them all the time. There's over 500 Nepalese people just alone in Colorado Springs that you don't recognize as being Nepali. We are so focused on sometimes it's color or individuals, but we forget to really go to the real direction and find out what we truly have as far as an audience. There's over 1 million people, for example, in Nepal, from Nepal, that live in Texas and in California. Mm. There was thousands of people, but the problem is people aren't recognizing who they are and says, hey, go out and talk to them. Make them a friend, like it says in the, in the, in the, in the Saudi versions. We have the capacity to do so much more but who's going to step up and do it? Amen. Amen. Yeah, God's looking for us to step up. And as Timothy just said, do it. Do it. Exciting. Amen. Any other comments before we, we say goodnight? Roger? Yeah, I just would say that um, when you're being sent, you need to know the person who's sending you. And, you know, and you've been touching on this tonight. And just to reiterate, is that if you're walking close to the Lord. And, and if you look at Jesus, I mean, here's, again, people he, people are saying the son of God, but he spent an incredible amount of time in prayer. Um, and if you look at Demas and you think about every time he has a revelation, every time something, he spent time praying, fasting before the Lord. He had, this man was walking real close to God. And spending the time and, and, you know, doing the things all that we've all talked about. Um, but it's that intimacy that it's also being lived, but that allows you to be hearing the Lord. And if you think of uh, Peter and John, they're walking by. They probably walked by, I read this recently. They probably walked by the, um, the individual that was lame that, got, that they looked to and said to be healed. They probably walked by this guy 50 times. But the Holy Ghost told them at that moment, I, you know, you know, fix your gaze on him and, you know, and speak to him. So we've got to, we, if we're hearing, we're going to know who those people are. We're going to, and Timothy is just saying the different, you know, all the things that we're all saying, but it's so rooted in, in listening, hearing, and that comes from the intimacy because, you know, it's the Lord drawing you in his heart. And once you, that's in tune, you're really, the rest will come just in, you know, as you walk it out, you know, it's, and it's being in the rest. You were talking before about people burning out and everything else. But if you're, if you're in that type of a, in, an intimate relationship, spending the time and everything else, you're not going to burn out because that's where the rest is. You're moving in the power of the Holy Ghost. And, and we said, we just said that, uh, Robert was just saying the gifts and the, the miracles, all these things. It, it just, we are right on track. Everybody that's sharing and, and all the things you said tonight, this is focusing. It's like a laser beam God's using tonight. And he just keeps clarifying and clarifying and pointing at, at what we're supposed to be doing. So, I mean, I just, you know, it's a blessing to uh, be a part of this. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And that's so important. Yeah, that's so important too. You highlight Roger about the time that, as we as we read, 
or as, as we have read the other writings of Demas, but the time that he spent with the Lord, because the things that were revealed to him that we read in our reading for tonight, the greatest business in the world, came as a result of him spending time with God. And, you know, spending time with him, talking to him. God talks, you know, God speaking to him as well, too. We think about the ministry of Jesus. Jesus often went away, got away from, you know, the busyness, the disciples. He went away. And he prayed, prayed all night. And um, we need to be, you know, I, I as an individual, when I get up early in the morning, I'm a morning person. This is late for me, actually, this time of day. And uh, But I like my mornings because it's quiet. I'm more focused. And I make a, I make a point of talking to God and, and probably listening more than I'm talking because I read the word some of the devotionals that I use every morning. To me, it's very, very refreshing. And, it, and, and for me, it, it uh, prepares my day. It sets, it's, it, it's, it's setting the day, you know, getting off on the right foot, I guess you might say, for me. But it goes back to spending time, quality time with God. And uh, we want to be men that do that. And as a result of that, we can understand and get, understand God's will and God's plan. Because for the most part, so many people, you know, are off doing their own thing. You know, it's kind of, it's almost an afterthought. When things aren't going right, and, you know, they're, they're turning back to God and say, okay, God, you know. But in fact, if if we, it's the day or whomever, it started out on the right you know, the right direction, the right priority, putting God first. Well, let's conclude tonight. And uh, uh, Bill, Bill Wilson, you, would you pray tonight? We'll, we'll close out. Okay. Lord, we thank you for this time. And, and Lord, as uh, Roger shared, that <clears throat> you are bringing things into focus, into mm -hmm. a laser focus for us as men. And, and your desire, Lord, is to fulfill that great commission in and through us. And we thank you for that. We uh, just pray that you would use us mightily, that, yes. that, that uh, as we start each day praying in the spirit, that you would reveal uh, your plan and your purpose. And we know, Lord, that your desire is for us to, to go and to, and to lay hands on the sick and see them recover and, and to just see you move mightily in and through us. And we acknowledge you, Lord, and we thank you that as, as we do that, you will direct our paths, and, and we thank you. Thank you for Ron and his commitment to this thank school you. of the vision, and bless him, Lord, as, as we finish out the last third of the classes, and thank you for each one of these men and their desire to, to know you better and to know what you desire of them as men of God. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, it's been wonderful, Good. terrific. Right. And thank uh, you, Ron. Thank you. Yeah, oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Glory to God. We'll see you. Thank we'll you, see you next man. Thursday. Yeah, I guess. Good night. Good night, all. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.